वेलकम ऑल माय नेम इज धुंडीराज देशपांडे आई एम वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग डॉक्टर डी वाई पाटिल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग मैनेजमेंट एंड रिसर्च अकोर्डिंग आई एम रिकॉर्डिंग दिस थर्ड वीडियो फॉर पार्शियल फुलफिलमेंट ऑफ फोर वीक एफ डी पी ऑन एनवायरमेंट एंड सस्टेनेबिलिटी ऑर्गेनाइज बाय डी वाई पाटिल कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग अकोर्डी पुणे सो टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज वीडियो टूडेज प्रेजेंटेशन इज अ बायोफ्यूएल प्रोडक्शन एज वी नो बायोफ्यूएल एज वी नो द करंट सीनेरियो सेज दैट देर इज अूज अमाउंट ऑफ कार्बन इमिशन इज ऑकरिंग इफ वी आर युटिलाइजिंग दी पेट्रोल डिजल सो इन ऑर्डर टू रिड्यूस डाउन द कार्बन कंटेंट एंड इन ऑर्डर टू रिड्यूस डाउन द कार्बन इमिशन फ्रॉम डिजल इट इज अ मैंडेटरी इट इज it is an option which can be used for converting the petro diesel into a bio diesel so let's understand what i have tried to convince in this type of video so uh, i have created before this two video this is the link of first video and this is the link of second video in a first video i have uh, deal with various types of biofuel processes that is used for the environment and sustainability purpose i had also discuss about the requirement of biofuel and the method available for the biodiesel production to understand the sustainability i had discuss about the various measure consider to evaluate the quality of the biodiesel so this very brief discussion about video 1 which i have done and in a video 2 this is the link for the second video and in video 2 i have discuss about a various iso standard which is being used for biodiesel production or biofuel production specially for biodiesel production in this case i have also discussed about the pollution as i have told you that petrol diesel is responsible for the huge amount of co2 liberation so these are the points which i have discussed in video number 2 now in video number 3 means the current video i am going to discuss about the biodiesel production process and carbon emission and co2 emission from this uh, biodiesel let's understand what are the various types of learning outcome which is being used now what are the learning outcomes during this video the student will able to understand need of biodiesel production what is the need of biofuel production then what is the meaning of environment and sustainability what are the various norms and standard which is available related to biofuel different astm processes and standard then the student will able to understand the petrol diesel and how much amount of pollution is being created by the petrol diesel and what are the risk which is which we have to take in order to shift from petrol diesel to bio diesel so these are the some learning outcomes that a student will able to understand after a student will able to understand during the uh, this video now let's understand to the next these are the various types of iso standard which is being used which is being available for the bio diesel production process these are the very few iso standard which i have included here the first standard which is which is used for the bio diesel is iso standard that is 14780 2017 this standard is used to define the method for the reduction of combined sample to laboratory sample and laboratory sample to sub sample and general analysis sample and it is applicable to solid biofuels then second standard is 16559 2014 this standard only include raw material and processed material originating from forestry and agro agricultural agricultural and horticultural the next standard is a 16948 2014 this describe the method for determining the total carbon hydrogen and nitrogen content in the solid biofuel then next iso standard is 16967 2015 this standard gets subdivided into two part 
a part a describe the direct determination on the fuel this method is also applicable for sulfur and minor element as we know sulfur are the major element which is present in the biodiesel or you can say in a petrol diesel which is responsible for the maximum amount of pollution and second part is a part b which gives a method to determining a pre determination on prepared 550 degree centigrade ash preparation so we know after burning of any compound the compound get dissociated into three part one is a gas second one is a ash and third one is a heat so whenever there is a creation of ash then this standard iso standard is also applicable for the production of ash and next standard is 17306 2016 this establish a methodology for quantitative determination of free glycerol as we know whenever we are producing a biodiesel then there is a creation of biofuel as well as there is a creation of glycerol so this iso standard is applicable for the glycerol production mono triglycerol and total glycerol this standard is used for gas chromatography in a biodiesel production for any raw material except castor oil means for all type of raw material we can use this iso standard 17306 but this standard is not applicable for the castor oil next slide then carbon footprint in this video we are going to compare the petro diesel and bio diesel so for that reason i have choose the concept that is called as a carbon footprint now what is carbon footprint is the carbon footprint means co2 release as a result of activity of a particular individuals organization or community most cases the total footprint can be calculated exactly as inadequate knowledge of a complex interaction between contributing process including the influence of a natural process that store or release co2 so for this reason the scientists propose the following definition of a carbon footprint a measure what is the definition of carbon footprint then definition of carbon footprint is a measure of total amount of carbon dioxide co2 and methane emission of a defined population system or activity considering all the relevant sources skin and storage within the special and temporary boundary of a population system or activity of interest calculated as a carbon dioxide equivalent using the relevant 100 year global warming potential so this is what a carbon cut this is what a carbon footprint is this is the production of biodiesel means how the biodiesel get produced nowadays now see biodiesel whenever i am going for the production of biodiesel the biodiesel get produced from the two types of means we require two raw material one is a alcohol and second one is a oil so here i have considered a vegetable oil which is being mixed with the alcohol for the production of a biodiesel here i have used two reactor this is reactor 1 this is reactor 2 and these are the two condenser which is being used which is going to form a biodiesel production so this is the process which is being used for the production of biodiesel the alcohol and oil these are mixed together and they have supplied to the reactor now these are the collision control reaction so alcohol molecule and vegetable molecule coincide with each other in the presence of some of the catalyst catalyst can be acid base alcohol the catalyst can be acid base or uh, a platinum base so any type of catalyst can be used for the production of biodiesel so these are these are going to react in this two reactor after the reaction is a completed after providing a particular amount of precedence time this biodiesel is get transferred into the decanter these are the two decanter or you can say separator which can be used so where there is a separation of a glycerol and biodiesel layer will take place and these two layers can be separated as a biodiesel and glycerin so biodiesel once we got the biodiesel then we have to go for the frequent washing of a biodiesel for obtaining a pure form of biodiesel so this is the generalized production of biodiesel process now in this case why we are trying to replace petro diesel with the biodiesel the reason behind that we have to reduce down the carbon footprint which is a major issue nowadays as we are doing 
as we are studying the environment and sustainability we should know that how much amount of co2 get produced with the help of petrol diesel so in order to understand this concept of production of co2 from petrol diesel i have considered the two cases these calculations i have done on the basis of stoichiometry now let's understand this is the first reaction which is being used i have used c6 c12 h26 this is the formula for the petrol diesel now this is the formula for uh, diesel c12 h26 if suppose i consider the density is a 0.86 ton per meter cube which result in a 528 g of co2 by 170, 170 g of diesel if i use equation number 1 means this equation then this much amount of carbon is associated with it now if i consider if i take this density 0.864 ton per meter cube as a density then we got such a type of carbon emission here 2.683 ton of co2 per meter cube of diesel this is the biggest amount of co2 emissions that is that can be done when we burn the petrol diesel so that's why what we are trying to do we are trying to replace this petrol diesel with a biodiesel now if i talk about biodiesel what you will observe the density of biodiesel is a 0.878 means there is a no much difference between the petrol diesel and biodiesel in the density of a petrol diesel and biodiesel are almost same and if you observe the molecular weight this biodiesel is obtained from the soybean oil i have taken a very simple example that biodiesel is a manufactured using soybean oil then molecular weight of that biodiesel is a 292.2 g per mole so if i burn such a type of biodiesel then there is a generation of a 282.45 g of co2 by 100 g of biodiesel for this reason i have used this equation equation number 2 this equations i have uh, taken out from some literature now taking into account the fuel density the following can be said means 280 282.4 5 ton co2 can be generated if i burn 113.83 meter cube of biodiesel so very less amount of carbon is coming out from the biodiesel in next slide we are going to see that this co2 is absorbed by the plant so this is called as a recycle co2 so if you observe about the carbon footprint of a biodiesel you will observe that in a biodiesel there will not be production of co2 or additional co2 get absorbed in the atmosphere that is get absorbed when we talk about the petrol diesel so equation number 1 will give you the amount of co2 generated so this is nothing but the amount of co2 generated 2.683 tons of co2 which get generated for meter cube of biodiesel and whereas for biodiesel here there is a generation of a 282.45 tons so much amount of less biodiesel CO2 will get generated with the help of biodiesel. Now, next slide says that this is nothing but the CO2 emission. Now, see if I am utilizing the vehicle, so my vehicle can be run on a gasoline. Gasoline means petrol. My vehicle can be run on a gasoline. My vehicle can be run on a flex fuel. My vehicle is can be run on a ethanol. Then we have diesel vehicles also. so if you observe that the vehicle which is utilizing ethanol will be responsible for the generation of a lowest amount of co2 so my suggestion is that we should replace this gasoline with the help of ethanol but as we know there are practical limitations of converting all the vehicles on a ethanol so it is not possible to convert but remember the ethanol vehicle will reduce will generate a very little amount of co2 the next slide says that a biodiesel and carbon footprint now this is the most important thing now what does it say a biodiesel is a fuel that is used in a diesel power vehicle whatever the diesel vehicle which we have we can use the same engine with the help of biodiesel but it is biodegradable but what is the advantage of biodiesel it is a biodegradable and non toxic first of all and biodiesel is a fantastic a way of reducing the carbon footprint as it only release carbon dioxide that plant absorb means during the process of photosynthesis plant absorb co2 
so whatever the amount of co2 which is going to be liberated into the atmosphere that co2 was absorbed by the plant at the time of photosynthesis so no any additional co2 going to be introduced into the atmosphere so total amount of co2 level on the atmosphere will remain same if you go for biodiesel sorry if you go for biodiesel production or biofuel utilization then what are the learning outcome what are the overall learning of the course what i have what is the overall learning of the course so in this course understanding of environment and sustainability nowadays environment and sustainability is going to be a major issue so this this is nothing but the first learning outcome of this course then what is the need of bio biofuel production as we have say as we have seen that if i use petrol diesel then there is a huge amount of liberation of co2 similarly if i use biodiesel there will be a less amount of co2 production so if you want to understand the concept of environment and if you want to balance the amount of co2 liberation in the environment it is a mandatory that we should understand or we should focus on the reduction of a carbon footprint so that is what a need of a biofuel production then we have learned a different iso standard carbon footprint and calculation of carbon emission so these are nothing but the outcome of this course and thank you thank you for watching this video this video is made for the partial fulfillment of a course four week faculty development course on environment and sustainability organized by dy patil institute of engineering management and research and my name is dumbiraj deshpande thank you thank you one and all